HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, the Trails Club hosted their annual public forum. We have scenes from the Hopkinton Police Department annual fishing derby and the latest in Hiller Sports, plus Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. On day one of town meeting, Articles 1 through 9 passed unanimously, and the first debate of the night was over Article 10. The fiscal 2020 operating budget raised some debate over the underride. And given that the town has had many surprise expenses in the past year, and given that nobody is going to get a tax rebate as a result of any underride, I submit, Mr. Moderator, that the town should have a voice in whether this proposed underride is prudent. So therefore I propose an amendment, or a, uh, I propose that we vote separately on the, on the underride. Budget. Mr. Moderator, I, I, as the maker of the motion, I would accept uh, instead to simply delete the underride section, the non-binding underride part of the budget. There was a motion to change language regarding the underride. The motion passed and the $92 million plus town budget for fiscal year 2020 was then voted through. $92.7 million. 23, the sidewalk master plan raised a whole lot of debate due to the proposal to construct a sidewalk along West Main Street. In lanes, we have several things going on right there. We have a right hand, we have two right hand turn lanes. Then we have <laughs> an exit that's supposed to merge into, and you're not supposed to make a left, but they always want to merge right in front of Cumbies. The article failed the required two-thirds majority with 124 voting for and 103 voting against the article. Day two of town meeting featured much debate. Article 25, purchase of a ladder truck was first on the agenda after some questions the article passed by an overwhelming majority, 256 to 11. Article 27, Town Hall Basement Renovation, raised debate. It's for file storage, it's for a kitchen, it's for an office. That isn't what the article says, it just says under the direction of the town manager. The article would fail the two-third required majority with 175 voting for and 112 against. Article 26, 28, 29, and 30 all passed. Article 31 was the next big debate, mostly over the dog park at 66B Fruit Street. Despite a motion to separate the dog park from the article, all parts of the article would eventually pass. Article 32, car wash use, raised heavy debate. The article failed the two-third majority with 226 for and 117 against. After Article 33 passed unanimously, Article 34 self-storage facility raised a whole lot of debate. Article 34 failed the required two-third majority. After Article 35 passed by an overwhelming majority, Article 36 Osma district was heavily debated. The goal of the article was to remove the age restriction on the units to comply with state regulations. Article 37 keeps the age restriction in the Osma district in place while allowing the planning board to approve the creation of the required number of affordable housing units elsewhere in Hopkinton by the developer. The article passed unanimously. Article 38, which was essentially a language change, 
passed by an overwhelming majority to close out day two of the 2019 annual town meeting. On day three of the Hopkinton annual town meeting, there was a lot of debate about Article 42, which was a citizen's petition for a one-year growth restriction. The article would ultimately fail the two-third majority. Article 43 was to change the Board of Selectmen to Select Board. The article passed a standing vote with 258 for and 53 against. Article 46 attempted to make 76 Main Street a historic district to prevent demolition. The article passed a standing vote 287 to 70. Article 47 changed the maximum demolition delay from 6 months to 18 months. The article passed a clear majority. Article 51 also drew heavy debate. The article attempted to allow the selectman and town manager to negotiate for a few different parcels of land to build a parking lot. Town meeting voted to allow the town to purchase 6 Walcott Street and a parcel of land at 25 and 35 Main Street, but declined 10 Walcott Street, 14 Main Street, and 0 Main Street. For Article 52, no action was recommended, which passed the article. 54 and 55 also passed unanimously to close out the 2019 Hopkinton Annual Town Meeting. The Hopkinton Trails Club hosted their annual public forum. HCAM's John Ritz was on the scene. All right, we're here at the Senior Center with Peter Legoy, Steve Frobeter, co-chairs of the Hopkinton Trails Club. Um, so, Fro, what's going on here tonight? Well, tonight we had our third annual Trails Forum, uh, something that the Trails Club uh, conceived of three years ago and has hosted each of the last three years. We had. Uh, a pretty nice turnout tonight. We had two really great speakers. Uh, we had the, the, the public health director for the uh, town uh, gave a very informative talk about ticks and tick control in town. And Marjorie Holman just finished with a presentation um, about easy trail, e easy walks in eastern Massachusetts. And uh, uh, it was a beautiful slideshow um, with a lot of information about where trails were, where you didn't know trails were. All right, Peter, what are some of the trail highlights from the past year? Well, in the past year, we built Hughes Trail. It's not quite finished yet, but it started. That's a trail that is off of Hayden Road, just past Chestnut Street, in a beautiful patch of woods that the town owns. We've also formed a trails club for the town of Hopkinton. The selectmen appointed the Trail Coordination and Management Committee and they'll be looking at figuring out how to coordinate trails throughout town and how to maintain and manage the town's trails and also help the, the selectmen with coordinating all the other trail groups in town including the trails club which we're a part of as well as the Hopkinton Area Land Trust working with Sudbury Valley trustees, and then other town groups that have land that trails might go on. Um, All right. uh, Fro, besides this forum, um, what other things does the Trails Club do? Well, so the Trails Club uh, does outreach. We have a trails uh, hike. We have a trails walk um, once a month. Uh, we publish it uh, on our website. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and on other social media platforms, uh, we hike local trails. Uh, they're lead hikes. They are at a leisurely pace. It's usually a couple of miles in an hour and a half or two hours. Uh, we have a monthly Trails Club meeting. That's the second Wednesday of every month at 6.30 uh, at the uh, conference room in the lower level of the library. So, Peter, you mentioned the, um, the new Trail Management Committee. Um, I believe you're the chair of that committee. I am the chair. So how do you see that changing the role of the Trails Club? How do you see it working with the Trails Club? Well, certainly we're going to try to interact with the Trails Club. I, the, as Fro just said, the Trails Club 
their initial primary focus was on hikes and, and working to encourage people to get out in the trail. For some time, we filled a, a void that we saw, which was the need for management of trails and the need to, to actually construct some trails. So hopefully the town can take over that process and let the Trails Club get back to being sort of a um, PR arm to encourage people to get out on the trails and to help people get out on the trails. Great. Well, thank you both. Um, from the third annual Town Trails Forum, this is John Ritz for HCAM News. Coming up next, we'll have the latest Hiller Sports update, scenes from the Hopkinton Police Department annual fishing derby, plus our HCAM Insider. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and healthcare services. What would you do if someone gave you a television station? Would you run a camera? Host your own programs? Would you like to be a director or edit your own shows? Or maybe be a big-time producer or cover your local sports? Well, your station is ready for action. Start your media adventures with the workshop at HCAM, from setting lights and directing talent to editing. HCAM makes quality programs and teaches you to do the same. If you're interested in having fun and making a difference in the community, why not do it on TV? Join our crew and get your own piece of the action. Welcome back to HCAM News. The Hopkinton Police Association hosted their annual fishing derby. Here's a look at the festivities. It was a beautiful Saturday afternoon for the annual Hopkinton Police Association fishing derby. The derby featured a whole lot of participants and most importantly, everyone had a good time. It was a great day. The weather really cooperated, cooperated with us today. Um, we had a great turnout. We had over 150 kids and parents. Uh, I think all the hot dogs and hamburgers are gone. Uh, it was a great day, so uh, we got lucky on the weather. Was there a lot of fish caught today? Not really. I think it's, I don't know why. The fish really, they weren't biting as well today. I don't know why, but uh, I think maybe because we put them in on Thursday, I think we have to put them in a little bit earlier so they get acclimated to the water. But, uh, looks like all the kids had a good time, and uh, see you next year. All right, right now we got our first winner, and it is for the biggest fish that uh, Chief Lee is going to present the trophy to you, and it is to Tom pulling out a fish at 15.5 inches. All right, Tom. All right, now we're going to announce the second biggest fish of the day, and that is going to be Megan C at 14 and three quarters inches. All right, Megan. All right, and accepting the third place trophy on behalf of her sister is going to be Rhea. That fish was going to be 12 and 3 quarters inches. This is most fish. Who? Peter L. Peter L. Peter L. Peter L. Peter L. Peter L. This trophy is going to be for most fish caught, and that's going to be for Peter L. Woo! 
What's your last name? Three fish. All right, Peter. Peter Lincoln. All right, smallest fish is going to go to Aaron F. It's going to be five inches. All right, Aaron. Good catch. Yeah. Still leaving me hanging. There you go, buddy. All right, and the final trophy for last fish of the day is going to be Logan S. Be a 10 inch fish. Come on up, Logan. All right, Logan. Good catch. And I don't want to forget to announce Caleb. He is not here anymore, but he was the first fish caught today. So congratulations to Caleb as well. All right, one more time. I just want to read off the list of our donators. Uh, we really appreciate them. This couldn't happen without them. And uh, big, big thanks to them. So that's going to be uh, Joyce Plumbing, Ted's of Fayville, Main Street Service, Putnam Pipe, Hop Friendly Service Mobile Station, Egan Electric, Elder Plumbing, Scott's Landscaping, Harvey, Harvey's, Nealon and Nealon, Sarah Duckett, McIntyre Loan, Bruce Creswell Jr., and uh, Lazaro Holliston Trust, a thanks to Hop News, Cornell's Pub, PJ's Vending, Phipps Insurance, Chesmore Funeral Home, DC Electric, Lumber Street Auto, Hopkins Lumber, JP, Shea Landscaping, Scott Septic, the Marathon Fund Committee, the Dynasty, John's John, Hiller's Pizza, Hopkins and Sportsman, Dunkin' Donuts, and the Bass Pro Shop. Thank you all. We really appreciate it, and we couldn't do it without you. Hope to see you all again next year. Trout. Everyone say donuts. Donuts. <laughs> that was, was kind of hurtful, Mike. Sorry about that. <laughs> all right, hold those trophies in the air, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, we are approaching the end of the spring sports season and many Hiller teams are trying to clinch a playoff spot. Here's a look at the latest Hiller sports update. On Monday, May 6th, Hiller's softball took on Bellingham. The Blackhawks scored 10 runs in the first inning and added a home run in the second inning. Pitch. See if she's able to settle down here in this inning as this is hit high in the air towards the wall. See ya! 11 0 Bellingham. A solo shot by the catcher. Ryan Haynes goes yard. Unreal. Bellingham putting on a clinic. Bottom of the sixth, Jillian Cedia made it a 13 8 game. Line up in the pitch. Cedia gets a piece of this one to the wall. See you later. Home run, Cedia. Well, that's the best well, you can do right there is hit the ball out of the ballpark. Well, if Holly didn't try to advance, could have been a three-run shot there. But it is a solo shot for Cedia. Bottom of the seventh, the Hiller is down to their final three outs. Sebastri deals. And this is hit in the air, over to right field. That'll get down for a hit. And it's going to be a 13-11 game. And it's going to perhaps be a triple. In the third she goes, safe. She ran right through the coach's stop sign. Kristen McCluskey reaching third base, driving in Carly Stevens. And it's a 13-11 Bellingham lead with Katie Holly coming to the plate. Katie Holly having a good day at the plate, 3-4-3 three, three with a walk. He's also scored a run and driven in a run. And we'll get a piece of this one. Over to left field it goes and it's caught. And that'll end the ball game. Alexis Rodriguez making the closing catch. Bellingham took the game 13 to 11. Since the loss, the Hillers have won three straight games and currently stand at 12 wins and two losses on the season. On Thursday, May 9th, Hiller's baseball took on Ashland under the lights at the turf fields. Top of the third, Ashland adds on to their one to nothing lead. And Hornung actually won the Metro West Daily News TBL Athlete of the Year. And he'll get a piece of this one over to right field. It goes, that'll get down for a base hit. 
Matt Arisi, the lead runner, heading over to third. Will he be waved around? Yes, he will. The throw home is going to be out of the glove of Simos, and Matt Arisi scores, and now up to third is Hornung. Hillers respond in the bottom of the third. Line up and the pitch. And this is hit in the air. Over to center field it goes. That'll get down. Lead runner Tommy Emersoni being waved around. And he will score. A 2-1 to one Ashland lead. An RBI single for Drew Rankatori. Top of the fourth. Ashland gets their lead back to two runs. Monzo is at a 172 coming into this game. He's going to add on to that here. That'll get down into center field. And being waved around is Shea Donovan. And it's a 3-1 to one Ashland lead. An RBI single for Dante Diavanzo. Ashland took the game 3-1. to one. The Hillers went on to beat Westwood on the road 8-6 to six, and currently stand at 11 wins and 3 losses on the season. On Wednesday, May 15th, Hillers boys lacrosse got the scoring started early and often against Norton. Shot goal Hillers. Zach Frank makes it one to nothing. And now it's stolen away, a shot there and a goal. Luke McDonald makes it two to nothing. Now it's Luke McDonald, he'll leave it out in front. There's a great pass by McBride and a shot by Riley Del Ponte. And that is in to make it three to nothing. 7.45 left to go in the first quarter. Rushing in Matt Fiore. Pass up behind the net, and there's a shot and a score by Riley Del Ponte. And just like that, it's 4 0 Hillers. 6.53 left to go in the first quarter. Yeah, I've got a classic transition going on here. Dylan McBride with a nice feed. Yeah, I mean, that's a Dylan classic. And another score there for the Hillers. I believe that was uh, Del Ponte with another one. Again. It's his third goal already. 5.09 left to go in the first quarter. 5 0 Hillers. Ponte leaves it out in front. And now a oh. great setup for McBride. 6 0 Hillers. This is the kind of game where it can get a little, you can get it easy to be a little too aggressive. And so, what you like to see is what they were just doing there, having some discipline, working the ball around still, and really making sure they take a good shot. That was some really good ball work. Back around, McDonald with possession. And there's Del Ponte with another Again. shot. And did that go in? I believe it did. Yes, it did. 7 0 Hillers. Riley having a career game here today. Certainly is. Four goals in the first quarter. It was an eight nothing Hillers lead after the first quarter and they allowed just about everyone to get into this game. Hopkinton took down Norton 16 to three. The Hillers currently stand at nine wins and four losses on the season. And with the win, they officially clinch a playoff spot. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Cardillo filling in for Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of HCAM Insider. I'm Matthew Cardillo, temporarily taking over for Matt Clark this week. I'm here to tell you what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, May 17th at 5 p.m., local artists, poets, and musicians gather to share their poetry and music on the new episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. Four months after, we both went to an anti-Valentine's Day meetup. We exchanged platonic cookies. Five months after, we both happened to be at the park on the first day of spring. Neither of us have a dog. It is six months after, there is a gaming convention we both will go to. If we play in the same game, I will ask if you would like to go out sometime. If you say never, I will know you are serious. <laughs> On Monday, May 20th at 8 p.m., Tom Nappy and Mike Tarosian announced the results of the 2019 Hopkinton election live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, May 22nd at 7 p.m., the Troublemakers perform a tribute to America in their annual spring concert on a brand new HCAM TV special. From sea to Also, at 
at 7 p.m., Marathon Elementary educators talk with parents about the importance of social emotional learning on a brand new HCAM Ed special. These social emotional um, competencies, these skills, and children just don't automatically have them. You can't just say, stop that, do this. Sometimes as parents, we do, um, but they don't know where to begin. They need the support and the guidance and the modeling, which we'll talk about, to help develop those skills. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hillers baseball versus Ashland and the Hillers softball versus Bellingham game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head on over to hcam.tv slash connect where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, then you can sign up for our daily news update. Well, that's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matthew Cordello, and thank you for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care, and we'll talk to you again soon. On day three of the Hopkinton Annual Town Meeting, there was a lot of debate about Article 42, which was a citizen's petition for a one-year growth restriction. What it's proposing to do seems to overlap, if not, if not substantially overtake, the role of the planning board. Um, planning boards are supposed to plan for the future growth, development, and preservation of a community's resources. And I, I would question uh, the, uh, the proponents here. Are the, is